<laughs> Freezy in the sky with diamonds! Hello my friends and welcome back to Player Display for a very, very special review for a few reasons. So first reason, this is a Mr. Freeze figure. Not just any old Mr. Freeze, not uh, Mr. Freeze animated, not an arc of Mr. Freeze. Ice, ice, chill, freeze, ice, ice. Ah! This is Mr. Freeze from 1997's Batman and Robin. Again, my favorite superhero movie of all time. I've already ranted and raved about why that is true and allowed in my podcast already, so I'm not going to go into all that here. Go in the Pod Guy podcast playlist and go ahead and listen. This is a third-party figure. It is not official. It is not licensed by DC whatsoever. But after we experienced a Tiger Toys Hellflame Killer Cronin, I just knew that I had to get this one, especially since that Cronin, or the Hellflame Killer, sold out and is no longer available. So when it comes to the third-party figure of one of my favorite characters in cinematic history, I absolutely had to get my hands on them. Meaning, it put a significant dent into my budget. So, speaking of that, that's another reason why this review is so important. Um, this might be, at least for now, an end to weekly reviews. Doesn't mean that we're no longer doing tutorials or a podcast podcast or maybe lightning reviews as well. Um, you just won't be having the full length reviews quite as often because again, I have some financial goals I want to reach. So we're going to do a little bit of a pause, not even a pause, more just a slowdown. But for now, we have this big, beautiful beauty to have a look at. So let's get right into it. This is not how the box arrived when I first got in the mail. Actually, it was a box inside of a box. This was the inner packaging. And then on the outside of it was a much bigger cardboard box to enforce it a little bit more. But then once you opened it, this box was wrapped up in bubble wrap. And similar to the Cronin figure we looked at before, it had some corner protectors. So they took very good care of this packaging. I will be sure to put a link to this seller from eBay in the description if you want to get one before, like Cronin, they disappear. So anyways, let's just hop right into it. There's a whole bunch of things I could be ranting and raving about right now, but I'm sure you want to see the damn figure. So let's do a nice classic tried and true unboxing. So anyhow, let's get right into it with Betsy over here. You know what goes on from here on out. Let's crack this box open and see how Victor Freeze is doing on the inside. Let's cut that side open. I'll put this one over here. And as we saw from the box, it's very plain. It just says... D Poo 2 and made in China. And fittingly, my fridge just kicked up in gear, almost as if it's prepared to refrigerate our ice dweller that is contained within this box. But anyhow, back to the box. The only indication that this holds Mr. Freeze at all is when you look at this information here. It says Dragon Toys 1 6 scale Victor Freeze. So I guess they can say his name, but uh, it's not licensed. So I don't know what the rules are. I don't care. I got my Mr. Freeze. There we go. Oh, they hurt the table. Nope. Okay, all good. Flip open this flap. And we got some black foam over here. Very good for protecting what will, I'm sure, will be a very nice box on the inside. Ooh, it's already looking really good. Okay, I opened it from the top. Oh man, this thing is great! Um, worth mentioning, I have not looked up a single review on this figure. Um, I love, especially with a figure like this, going into them dry and just seeing what's going on. And so far, everything looks, I'll say it once, I might say it again, very, very cool. Sorry, had to happen. Anyhow, here is our first initial look at this Dr. Zero, which is his uh, patent pending name because this is a bootleg figure, but he looks fantastic. I mean, he's got a really beautiful body glove. He's got the blue panels and everything, which are supposed to be susceptible to black light. So I do have a black light. We will test it out later on towards the end of this review, most likely. Got the helmet with the goggles, which has an LED feature. He just is packed with a whole bunch of stuff. Up to the side, we have the suit again, but with the head removed option, so you just have the suit being idle. Off to the side, we have, is that the same picture? No, it's a different picture of Mr. Freeze over there with this freeze ray. And over here, we've got the empty suit once more. So let's slide this open. It looks like you just push it open. It's a pre odd presentation. It's just wrapped up in the cardboard, the cardstock, whatever. Then you slide it off, and then you just have foam. So it's not even a true box. But it looks like we lift this panel up, and that's where we see this beauty. Holy. I'm going to try to tilt this up so you can see all the contents. And <laughs> it looks, looks freaking amazing. This is Mr. Freeze. Mr. Freeze. 
Mr. Freeze. There has been one other one six scale Mr. Freeze um, done for Batman and Robin, but that was done in 1997. So he's notoriously proportionally incorrect. But this figure, it looks like they got everything just right so far. But again, let's unpack him and see what we got. So let's take things slow. Let's start off with this blaster over here, or his freeze ray. It's got some heft to it. Tapping it, it doesn't seem like it's die cast or anything. Also got the helmet up here, which again has an LED feature. I hope there are instructions because I'm not sure how that works. It looks like it plugs into something right there. So we'll test it out later. He also has goggles that are stuffed up here. And they got a very thin piece of elastic to go around his head, but it feels very stretchy. So um, we'll, we'll test that out and see how that looks. You also have two alternate hands. I don't imagine that you need a ton with him, but it looks like we have an alternate gripping hand for his freeze blaster. I know I have like a bunch of names for his weapon, freeze blaster, freeze ray. I don't know what to call it, but it looks awesome regardless. And then we have another gripping hand over here. Not as much trigger finger as this one is, but it's all gripping hand. So it probably goes around the more cylindrical grip towards the front of the gun. So that'll be really nice. Then we got the main figure up here. And he is quite shiny. Not quite chrome, but close. Really damn close. So let's peel off all this plastic garbage that we're not going to need. We'll have a keener look at this figure soon. But wait, there's more. As I suspected, there is a panel on the underside. And if you lift this one away, we also get something that's a little over the top, but still a welcomed addition. We have his wings that he used in that one infamous scene. It seems like there's some glue residue. I'm not sure if that'll be easier, difficult to clean off. It looks like it's a little bit dusty, so I just need to give it a rinse and hopefully that will come out. I don't plan on using these wings primarily anyways. Um, oh, it looks like if you turn it to this side, it'll be better off. So we got the two wings looking really cool. I doubt they're as big as they were in that movie itself, but I don't care. Anyhow, let me screw around with him, uh, do a little bit of learning, and we'll see what this figure's all about. Here we are with the man who killed the dinosaurs, and oh man, I think I'm in love all over again. My previous favorite figure on this channel was the Cronin. I think this guy's taking the cake, though. I have said ice cream cake, that would have been better, or would that be too punny for the moment? Uh, let's move on. I haven't done a whole ton with this guy yet. I just posed him up on the figure stand that did not come with the figure yet, because he's, of course, Arnold Schwarzenegger. He's very big, and he's got one of the most expensive suits ever produced for a film. So I did, did want to be sure that he'd be standing up as we were talking about him and giving him a look but anyways let's just dive in and look at the very crisp details on this figure let's start off with the head sculpt and you know what it looks like arnie i definitely see that in there it's done in a very nice shiny blue which is of course very accurate to the film but i like how it's not too glittery it doesn't look like it's been speckled with glitter i feel like it would look a little bit too crazy it's done in more of a metallic sheen which i really do like although it seems like there may be a slight scuff on the top of his head there but i'm sure once you put the helmet on it won't even be visible anyways and one thing i wanted to draw attention to if we move the stand out of the way for a second if you tilt him down a little bit towards the light the eyes catch a lot of the light they're done in almost this metallic chrome or something like that if i turn this guy around there is this weird little wire kind of flopping around so that is meant to plug into the helmet itself i have no idea how that works there were no instructions so we're gonna have to toy around with him i mean kind of the point he's a toy and just see how that works but i'm really looking forward to that i do have a black light and everything so we'll put that all together towards the end of the video and just see what's going on um, we're not going to talk about every single detail here because we just be sitting here all day but i mean it looks amazing i mean he's got the trademark blue pectorals just i'm um, stabbing back at you and they look fantastic i really love how you can actually make out the body glove underneath them but it's really interesting it kind of warps the texture it has this like funhouse mirror effect which i think is really neat so it just gives him a little bit more depth also have that little blue accent over there and one thing i'll mention now is you can't really talk about this figure without comparing him to the mcfarland mr freeze which was missing a whole lot of details and me being um arnold schwarzenegger mr freeze connoisseur um there are a lot of details on that figure that were missing that this figure takes care of this guy's got everything which is fantastic 
He's also got two really big bulky shoulder pads over here. And if we pop in a little bit closely, you can actually see there is some texture detail in there. You've almost got this sort of um, honeycomb look on the inside of that, which looks really nice. I mean, there's so many little rivets and edges and everything. And this is a very good place to look at the base silver. It is not quite chrome. I'm not going to dare giving the sky chrome paint. <laughs> not a chance in hell. But I do like what they went with. I think it is very beautiful. Do I prefer chrome? Sure. Do I like what they did anyways? Absolutely. I, I'm not complaining at all. Um, I, so far, have no complaints whatsoever. Another di big difference between this one and the McFarlane figure is he actually comes with the backpack. I was a little annoyed with the McFarlane one because there was no backpack to speak of. It was just a bare back, and I felt like there was something that was very missing. Even here, something that is missing, there was, there was a whole bunch of tubes that are going up to the helmet and I think the gauntlets. So... Not something you're not getting here, but at the same time, I don't blame them. I feel like that would be very fragile, and at the end of the day, not very noticeable. Now let's move on to the arms. The arms are actually different, so we, it is worth looking at both of them. Over here, we have the arm where he deposits his diamonds to stay alive. I think that's like the radar. That tells him how many diamonds he needs. And then this is where the diamonds go into. Um, again, it's a comic book character. It's not supposed to make sense, doesn't need to. It, it looks really interesting. And then over here on his left arm, we have a panel which, of course, conceals the um, treatment to McGregor Syndrome, the ever-important treatment that is very plot-significant. So I really love that they have that detail in there. And you also have a very good look at the body glove. It feels like it's made of a really sturdy material. It doesn't seem like it's going to peel apart on me or anything like that. I mean, if you roughhouse with them, then yeah, sure, it's going to come apart. But treat it nicely, as you're supposed to do, because this is an adult collectible. And I don't feel like it should come unraveled or anything like that. Moving on down to the legs, let's move on down right here. Um, again, we got the thigh armor, we got some armor here for the shins, and you got some two little, almost like eyes up here at the knees, looking really sharp. And you also have some more blue around here at the calves, also looking very blue and beautiful. I never noticed this in the film, I never noticed this on any of the merch, I never noticed this in the posters or anything. He has two different shoes. I never caught that. I'm going to have to look at more shots of the suit itself because I've looked at them before because I think the suit is so badass. And for the life of me, I've never noticed the two different shoes. Um, I'm not complaining at all. Like, whether that's lore accurate or not, I just think that looks really neat. But, like, add some story to the character. Maybe at some point a foot was damaged and he had to just scrap together a new piece of foot armor or something like that. So I really love how you got this very industrial looking foot over here. Then you got one that's a little bit more smooth over here on his left. I think that's really nice. It's just a very interesting figure all around. Speaking of all around, let's do an all around and <laughs> go to the back as well. You can see we got some more blue on the back. Um, they could have totally skipped that. I mean, that's something McFarlane would skip. They just... They, they definitely miss a lot of the blue paint apps on the figure. I think that's it for the base figure. <laughs> there's so many details, there's no way you could have mentioned them all, but hopefully I gave you enough angles with what with which to work with, so you have an idea of what we're talking about here. One of the most badass action figures I've ever held, regardless of whether it's a bootleg or not. This guy, <laughs> he's probably already my top figure of the year. I actually wanted to pull on into one of his armpits over here because there are a few other details that I did want to note. First thing, you get a better view of the body glove in there. It's got like silver and, and black stripes, which I think looks really nice. But then you also see this separation in the armor over here. Um, you can see here it's a little bit more apart than it is on this side. So I imagine that's just how they put the figure together. So if they ever came undone or anything like that, just get a little toothpick and then slide some glue down there, piece back to back together, I'm sure you'd have no problem. Right now, it doesn't seem like it wants to move in or out at all, so I'm not going to bother with that. I'm pretty sure it's all one solid, solid piece at the moment, but if it ever came undone, I'm sure it would be an easy fix. So just a few extra little details for you. Now let's try gearing Mr. Freeze up. I'm going to give him everything that he has in one big swoop, so we'll see what everything looks like combined. So let's start off with the goggles over here, again made with the same translucent plastic that we saw throughout the rest of the body. Gotta take that elastic, sling it around his head, over his ears, 
and then poured that right over his nose, and that's looking pretty good. I'm digging that look a lot. I prefer him without it, but for the sake of this review, we will keep those on. As we try sliding on the helmet, I'm a little bit intimidated by this, because I don't want anything to be ruined. Well, firstly, let's look at the helmet. Um, also done in the same silver as the rest of the armor, as it should be. Going around to the back, there's a little bit of paint slop right here at those vented areas, but it's on the back, not a big deal. And also, you just get some paint and correct it. It's, that's the only flaw that I've seen with this figure so far. They also have the rest of the wire connection in there. So I guess we just slide this right onto his head and then we peel the wire back and it connects it to the wire that's on the backpack. So let me try that. Again, you have the goggles on there as well. So I don't want anything to get in the way here. Oh, you'll notice that this plastic is flexible. So you can kind of, there we go. You can peel it around the rest of the goggle portion over here. And then you can slide the helmet over this figure and we can align the goggles a little bit better afterwards. So there we go, have them looking up and everything looks great. So now let's try the LED feature. I have no idea how this works. I don't even know if you need a button. I don't need, even know if batteries are included, but let's find out. So here we are in the back. Um, you can see that this wire extends considerably from the backpack and we're just going to plug this in. There we go, that's all the way in. You can see it's a nice and secure fit. So let me feel around, maybe there's a button or something, I don't know. Okay, I think I figured it out. So um, firstly, the shoulder pads, they are on this figure with two pins, similar to the McFarlane one. So you could swing them up and down as much as you want, which is really nice. That gives him a lot more articulation. Second thing, there is a panel on top of the backpack that can be removed. So you just pull that up. It doesn't click or anything, lift it right off. You pull this wire out and that's as far as I got. Let's see here. We got this battery compartment. So is there a switch or anything in here that we can press? Firstly, are there even batteries in here? Let me figure that out first. Got a handy dandy screwdriver over here. Let's just see what we have. Oh, there it goes, okay. Um, yeah, there are no batteries included. Hmm, so I don't know what types of batteries it needs. Give me a second here. All right, so unfortunately, I looked through all the packaging, every baggie, I looked for extra instructions. I looked to see if there were some batteries included in a separate little bag or something like that. I couldn't find any mention or anything concerning the batteries. So unfortunately, I won't be able to light this up today. But if I am able to do that in the future, then I will put a comment in below and pin it so that way you can see what types of batteries it uses. And I also might do a little YouTube short on that so you can see that in action. But today, we unfortunately will not be able to light up the helmet. But I'm not too disheartened because again, it's got that same plastic that everything else has. So the black light will still work. So that's not a huge deal. But anyways, I will put this back together. Okay, so I'm almost done putting everything back in place, but one thing I did notice is that this top portion of the backpack is actually magnetized. So all you gotta do is align the wire with that big old re rectangle in there, slot that on, and it'll click right in place. So that's why there was no click before. It's just a magnet. It doesn't slot in or anything. It just aligns itself straight away. So that's really nice to see. Our next step here is it looks like we have two default hands. They're both open, more relaxed, but naturally those are not the hands that we'll be going with today because we want them holding the freeze ray. So let's see how that works out. First, let's try popping the hands off and see how it goes. Um, predictably, the joint came out with the hand. So we're just gonna see if that will pop on out of here. Hope it does. Might need some warm water, I'll, we'll see. It's a very tight socket, so I think I may need to get some hot water. So give me a second here. Before you do with hot water, I did want to do a little bit of a test with the left hands. So the hand that he came with, again, is this relaxed hand over here. And one thing I wanted to try out is if this hand is good enough to hold the other end of the blaster, and it is, it just pops right in. But if you go with the other hand that is meant to hold that grip, it is a lot tighter. You'll see that over here, sorry, I'm doing this at a really weird angle for some reason. Um, the hands are not very flexible at all. They're really stiff. So it's gonna be much tighter to get this on here. So I'm actually not going to be using this hand. I will be sticking with this one as a default for the gripping, or if he wants to be holding anything in his hand, like a diamond or something, then we can do that as well. So I'm gonna be sticking with this hand. As for the other hand though, we definitely need the gripping hand. So I'm gonna do some warming up with this hand over here and do a joint swap. So give me a second. Here we have the freeze blaster with the gripping hand already on it. I warmed this hand up as well, just to be sure that it would be able to go around the grip. So now I don't have to worry about that. But also here is the joint itself. So going into the wrist, we have a longer peg. 
than going into the hand itself, we have a shorter mushroom peg over there. So if you want the hands to be easier to swap on and off and everything, all you'd probably need to do is shave down um, the mushroom with a file, a nail clipper, or something like that. Then you'll have a little bit easier poppage, if you know what I mean. So um, I am actually going to be sticking with these hands probably for all time, so I'm not going to bother with that mod, but... Anyhow, because this hand is still warm, that goes right in, which is really good, and then we should be able to get these hands in. Again, I will be using a default for the lefty over here, so I'm just going to slot that right back on where it was before. Another thing worth mentioning, um, this should be pretty obvious, but you can indeed slide off the armor, do a little bit of tweaking with the body glove if you wanted to, but I don't feel the need to do that, so we'll put that right on. And then we can get the freeze ray hand on his right arm so let's do that as well everything seems okay it's a very heavy gun so it seems to dip, dip down but let's see we can bend that up move it around a little bit get the grip a little bit more down on the hand he's slipping and sliding all over the place which i guess is befitting to his character <laughs> almost as if he's on ice. i'll get this other hand around that front grip and that should be a nice hold now can he hold the gun up without it gravitating downwards um let's pull him out and see and yeah he looks really fantastic so not much worry there so it's going to take a little bit of warming up the hands so that way you can pop out the joints and then go with the hands that you prefer but once you get there he looks really solid. The last two accessories we have to look at are the two wings, which aren't particularly impressive, but they're still pretty neat. I don't think I'll be displaying them with him because, frankly, they actually look pretty cheap in contrast to the rest of the figure. But, I mean, they're interesting. They're done in a base black plastic. It's got almost this um, wing design going down with the bones, kind of. I don't know what you'd call it exactly. I don't think these, these are very screen accurate. I think they should be done in a silver. So, I don't know. You could maybe pocket these up with some masking tape, spray them with silver or something like that. I'm not going to go out of my way to do that because, again, they're not my preference, but they exist and they're interesting. Although it is worth mentioning, we talked about this already briefly, but on this on this side of this wing, you've got this glue residue over here, which is kind of weird, but again, it's not the worst thing because all you need to do is just have it on the good side. It looks like they all hook in the same way, so you can flip the wings on either side that you want. So let's go ahead and attempt that. We'll take Mr. Freeze over here, excuse me, Dr. Zero, flip these shoulders up, remove the top of the backpack, and then we're gonna slot the wings in. So we got one slot on either side of the backpack, Move the shoulder pauldron. Oh, actually, the shoulder pauldron pops off completely. So you, if you want, you can just move it totally out of the way. So you can see they're right there. So that's really nice. But let's see what he's like with the wings, just for the sake of experimenting here. Definitely awkward, I'll say that much. But eventually it goes in and... Yeah, it feels weird. I don't like this. They go in, but it's like a very clunky entrance. I don't love these wings much at all. I don't want to damage my figure, but you get the picture. You're supposed to take these uh, little pegs here, put them in the slots, and then he'll soar away, uh, supposedly. But they seem to be almost, if we pop in here a little bit, they're like rubbing the paint around, and it doesn't look too good. So I feel like these will actually be a casualty towards the figure, so I'm going to omit those wings entirely. I apologize for that, but I just don't trust the wings. I don't trust what they're going to be doing to the backpack over there, so I'm not going to install them. I feel like they're not properly sculpted to go in there, so I am going to skip that step. I am sorry. There are other reviews if you must see the wings on, but I mean, it's one scene in the film. Odds are you're not going to be wanting to display them with them. Now I'm going to lower the freeze ray a little bit so we have a better look at his massive pectorals in anticipation for the blacklight. I have a blacklight over here. It's for Halloween, hence the RIP, but I mean, blacklight's a blacklight. It's pretty cool. It's got this little uh, lever over there so you can angle it in which way you want, but it's only blacklight I have, so this is the one that we'll be working with today. Also, it's a strobe feature, so I will hide that before um, I get to the static um, mode on it. So I'm going to turn off the lights in this closet, and it's going to be pitch black, just like that. And now I'm going to go under my desk, switch this thing on, bring it up, and let's see here. I'm not sure how well this will capture on camera. So, not sure how well the camera's picking it up, but um, yeah, it seems like it is going pretty well. I don't know if we pull it back a little bit. It can make it out a little bit better there. You see that the blue is kind of highlighted as we move the black light around. So, 
It more so illuminates the entire figure rather than those individual cells. That's because everything is so reflecty anyway. So I don't think the black light is necessary. Get any kind of blue light on this figure and it'll look good. Um, unfortunately, it's not going to give him that really neon um, LED look that we were seeing in the snapshots for this figure. Um, but it does highlight him a little bit more with the naked eye. So unfortunately, that's going to be a matter of trust. I know you can't see it too well over here. If you zoom in a little bit, um, at least from what I'm seeing, the acrylic around the helmet is lighting up. It feels a lot more blue than everything else. But that's only when you focus the black light directly on certain features. So you're not going to see that too well. I'm going to attempt to take photo shots and see if it comes off better there. But if they're not going to turn out well, then I won't bother. But yeah, so black light feature, it does not do a whole ton, but it still makes him look good. But again, I feel like you could just go with any type of lighting and that will help him to shine a little bit more. One thing I forgot to do is also bring in one of the wings. So we got one here and see how the black light does. Eh, it doesn't do a ton. Again, it looks a lot better to the naked eye. I know I've said that a million times, but on camera, it's not really picking it up. So um, once you get the figure in hand, it will look a little bit more like it does in the photo shots. I'm actually doing this in post, but as another test, I wanted to get a light, not a black light, just a standard color changing light. I wanted to see what we could do here. So firstly, we got a blue over here in darkness and that still illuminates the suit pretty nicely so I don't have a big issue with that. In fact we can angle it a little bit and it's a little bit nicer. Let's go to this lighter blue over here. That's pretty good. But that's an alternative. You can just get a standard colored light. It'll still look neat. One last thing I wanted to mention is it's actually very easy to pop off the head if you wish but you can't really seem to remove the neck. Um, the box and the the artwork of the figure imply that you'd be able to remove the head and the neck so that way you could have the suit without Mr. Freeze in there, but it doesn't seem like that's an option. I don't see a way for you to remove the neck. Um, I'll screw around with him and see what I can do. Um, again, any updates, I'll drop it in the comments, but at the moment, I'm not seeing any way to do that, so that's okay. I mean, I prefer him with the head, which will just drop right back on right there, and then slot on the helmet, which is very easy to do, again, without the goggles, so all good there. But I will actually remove the helmet once again because it's so simple now that we know that. And now we can just move straight into articulation. Firstly, we got the head up top. We have a pretty good amount of tilt. It's just a dumbbell joint, but it seems like it gives him a pretty decent amount. Doesn't go a whole lot back, but he does go a lot more down. He's got all the swivel that you want, which is pretty much all you really need. Shoulder pauldrons, we kind of talked about how they swivel up and down and they should be removable, at least from the back they are from the front. I'm not totally sure, I'm not gonna risk that. But if you move those out of the way and then move the arms up, um, it's a basic one six scale body, so I imagine you can move them in any way you want. And you can, but the body glove does add a little bit of elasticity to him, so he kind of wants to rubber back to the position he was in before, so you do need to be a little careful with that. But then again, he's not supposed to be moving a whole ton. I mean, he's much more rigid in his movements and his posture, so that's not a huge deal. As for the elbows, you have probably a double joint in there, but you're not going to be able to go very far because of the armor clashing with itself. Down to the wrists, if you move the gauntlet back a little bit, I suspect you'll be able to get a little bit more, but like any Hot Toys figure, you should be able to get that down and up. If you rotate that joint, you'll get side to side as well. On the torso, um, this is all one piece, so you're not going to get anything in the abs over here, but it seems you do have some swivel, just enough. You don't need any more than that, so that's okay. It goes a little bit down. Let's move that arm out of the way there. And as for back, quite a bit more. As for the legs, they kick out to the side. Um, not a whole ton. I mean, you probably want this guy firmly on the ground anyways. As for kicking forward just a little bit, so you can actually have him doing some walking. I mean, he definitely never ran in this armor, so that's totally fine. As for knees, I tried these before and they were really loud. Yeah, so those are the loudest joints I've ever heard on an action figure, but it does crunch into, I think, exactly 90. We can push it on back. Ow. If that really bugs you, I guess you could take off the body glove and give him some oil, but I won't be doing that. So let me know how your experience is in the comments. As for the feet down here, they're really big and clunky, but let's see if there's anything at all, because I'm not really feeling any joint. There's a swivel, and oh yeah. Okay, so I kind of had to break it. Oh, never mind. It totally popped off from the ball joint there. 
Yeah, it looks like we got a lot of sculpt at the top of each foot. So as a result of that, you're not going to be able to do a whole lot with the feet, unfortunately. So you can get a swivel in there, but if you attempt anything such as a tilting up or down or rocker, you're not going to get that. So that's a minor bummer, but then again, he's not supposed to be very mobile anyways. And if for those who are wondering, there's no toe articulation either. The last thing that I did want to note is that there is a little bit of scoring on this pectoral up here. Um, I think some of that was from when I first unboxed him, but then I got another extra nick over here as I was fiddling around with the blaster. So that is something you do potentially want to be wary of. Um, just be aware of that, be cautious, and get be sure everything's out of the way as you're moving him, and you shouldn't get too much scratching. I honestly don't mind it too much because I imagine he has some slight wear and tear to him. He's not totally pristine, and from a distance it's not going to be noticeable anyway. So. Not a big deal, just thought you should know. Now for some size comparisons. Firstly, we have, I believe it was a DC Direct Rorschach, which is highly modified with new mask and weathering on all the soft goods. And they're pretty much the same height. You're a little thrown off by the base, but if I move this guy up a little bit, Mr. Freeze anyways, they're pretty much the same height. I think Arnold has a slight edge on him, but... Yeah, he's not totally tall, but then again, DC Direct, it wasn't particularly scale accurate, so he's probably not the best gauge, but if you want him next to a DC Direct figure, doesn't quite pan out. Alternatively, here's a more modern figure. I don't remember if this is Hot Toys or Sideshow, but we have the classic comics Harley Quinn, and this time, Mr. Freeze is suitably much taller than her, on the point that she's a female character, and then you also have Arnold Schwarzenegger in the armor over here, so that makes perfect sense. To wrap up, here's a blast from the past being our very first 1-6 scale figure review, being the sideshow King Shark from Suicide Squad, and obviously he is taller than Mr. Freeze. In fact, if we go ahead and remove the stand and get Mr. Freeze's feet flush with the ground, you can see that obviously King Shark is bigger than him, which seems correct, right? So we will go ahead and situate Mr. Freeze, aka Dr. Zero, back on his stand as we bring in our final size comparison, which is, of course, Star Wars The Black Series, Mecha Muck! Please! Show some mercy! Mercy? Okay. Wait, really? You're just gonna let me go? Since my underrated character arc, my heart is not as cold as it used to be. Wow, how the people have changed! Does it make you happy? You're so strange! Now, while I don't think this figure is exactly perfect, for a bootleg, he is absolutely awesome. He's very screen accurate. He's got all the armor detailing in there, all the little grooves and ridges, all the blue panel work, the helmet, the wings, maybe less so the wings. Also got the goggles and the very accurate Arnie head sculpt. And of course, you got the really big old blaster down there, alternate hands. He's got a very good amount of accessories for a knockoff figure. But at the same time, there are a few little issues. Firstly, there's a little bit of scoring here and there, not the most noticeable, like we got a little bit of a ding up there on the head, a little bit over there on the right pectoral. Also, the black light feature doesn't work awesome, not in the camera, nor the make naked eye. It's not the greatest thing ever, but it's a fun little feature. I think you could still do without it, but he still looks cool. <clears throat> cool as is. I think the biggest misfire with this figure is definitely the wings. First of all, the wings don't look that amazing, nor are they accurate to the film. They're just done in black, and then they got the little blue circles on them. And also, they don't really fit into the backpack comfortably at all. Well, they don't fit at all. I feel like it's going to split the backpack open into pieces or something like that. I just feel like those slots are too small, or the pegs are too big. I'm not sure. Um, I just feel like they're not healthy for the figure so I won't be using them, but that's okay. They feel very cheap. I feel like I could just put them away somewhere else and it's not the biggest deal. But then you get the helmet, the freeze ray, and the goggles. That's a package I care about, especially for the, the price I got them at. The seller that I got them from is actually cheaper than everyone else. So again, I implore you, if you're interested in this figure before he sells out, go to that seller. And lastly, I do wish that the ankles had better articulation. I do feel like that could be fixed. Maybe you could like shave down the top of the foot sculpt so that way there's a little bit more room between the actual foot sculpt and then the dumbbell joint that's down there. So then he could be a little bit more walking forward. He could spread that, spread out the legs a little bit more so he has a little bit more of a power pose going on. I feel like all you can really do with him right now is just fiddle with the arms and the head and that's kind of it. But all that being said, I mean, if you just think of this guy as a display piece, holy crap, he's amazing. He looks incredible. 
I mean, he's definitely my favorite one six scale figure of all time. I mean, it's very much neck and neck with Cronin. So do I recommend this figure? Yes, just be aware of those few little things. Again, you got some dings in there, the LED feature, it looks like you gotta figure out what battery that is. The wings probably aren't gonna work at all, so if you don't care about those, it's not a huge deal, but if you do wanna use them, you might be out of luck. And also you got the joints and the wrists, which are a little bit quirky. You gotta warm up the hands in order to port out the joint. Then you gotta sand down the joint a little bit so the hands are easier to interchange if you choose to do so in the future. I don't, so I'm just gonna leave them as is, right, right here as they are. Again, he's gonna be gripping that freeze ray for all time, and I prefer this more open relaxed hand because it's a better grip for the freeze ray, and also you can hold his helmet just like that, so I think that looks really nice. And that's about it for this review. I really enjoyed this figure and this review as well. Once again, we're going to be cutting down on reviews a little bit. This channel's not going to go dormant or anything. But if you miss my beautiful voice and my extensive vocabulary, then please, if you wish, go check out the brand new Pod Place channel in the description below, where we will be doing some Let's Plays. Just for fun, probably not going to do it all the time, but just a little bit of a substitution while we're not doing a whole ton of reviews. Again, I'm trying to spread it out, trying to work on my budget a little bit, especially now that I have this dude, so I want to be a little bit careful. So whatever we're doing, whether we're playing a game, or reviewing an action figure, or doing a tutorial, or doing a pod guy podcast, we're going to be having some fun. We'll always find a way to keep the ball rolling, so don't worry about that. Anyways, all that being said, I hope you enjoyed this review, and if you did, then please, as per usual, be sure to like, comment, ring the bell to be notified of our latest arrivals, and subscribe. Speaking, humbly reminding you to support the pod Patreon in the description to guarantee new content every single week. Thank you guys very much for watching. Rock on, and I will see you all later. In my note and post, I went through the actual outside box, and there was a little blind bag, and it contained this little blue crystal heart. I don't know if that was intentional or not. It's a freebie, I think. But hey, we found Mr. Freeze's cold heart, so <laughs> that's kind of poetic, I guess. You can hold this now, I suppose. What about the frickin' batteries?